Welcome, everyone, to Dark Loops Productions, What You Love, a podcast in which I interview people and ask them three questions. What you love, how do you find it, and how do you keep it in your daily life? I'm Dr. Scott Jordan, a.k.a. Zombie Scotty, cognitive psychologist, philosopher at Illinois State University. Today, I have the great pleasure of interviewing Hugo Award-winning Professor John Jennings. John, welcome to the program. Please tell the audience a little something about who you are and what you do. Thank you for having me, Scott. I really appreciate it. It's such a, a pleasure to be talking to your audience. Um, so currently, I'm a professor of media and cultural studies. And uh, my background, though, is in art. Uh, for about 20 years or so, I was a graphic design uh, teacher. So I would teach classes in like uh, design methodology, design history, you know, uh, classes around Afrofuturism and design, you know, basically I was, you know, production classes on design. So I was, a you know, my, my background is in, as a designer, you know, mm. and then somewhere along the line, I got really interested in representation and symbology and things of that nature in mm -hmm. you know, media. And I became like a really interdisciplinary scholar. And so now I teach courses on Afrofuturism, horror, uh, comics and contemporary culture. You know, and I've kind of segued from being like yeah. you know, designer to like theorist, you know, that's maker fantastic. Guy. Yeah, but and I do a lot of comics too. <laughs> no, exactly. You said something earlier when we were chatting about a course on the science fiction or racist science fiction. Could you yeah, say yeah. something about that? Yeah, so that was a course. So what was really so when I when I left University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign, I started teaching at uh SUNY Buff well, UB, you know, University mm -hmm. of Illinois. And uh, they allowed me to do some really theoretical classes, you know, so I was thinking of a lot about, um, you know, uh, diegetic prototypes, you know, from from uh, uh, industrial design parlance, where it's basically you would make like a design fiction. So okay. what I mean by that is you create like a scenario and it would be like, sometimes it'd be science fiction oriented or whatever. Mm. And the, the, the diegetic prototypes were like these objects that were inside of the, the story, right? Mm. And I started thinking like, that's kind of how race is. <laughs> I was like, that's huh. great. Man. So I started applying that kind of ideology to critical race theory. And so I came with this class called race as science fiction. Dude, that's amazing. Those. Yeah. So that was, and it was a practice, it was a practice. Uh, it was a studio class. And so, you know, so we got to do a comp panel called that title someday. Race as science fiction. Oh, Absolutely, yeah. man. That, yeah, it would be great. Find our stories that that do that and talk about them as social concepts. Oh, it would be, so, be so easy, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's so many stories. But yeah, so that was what the and it was. A, it was a, essentially an Afrofuturism design class, essentially. That's fantastic. So we're gonna go here to question one. John Jennings, what you love, man. Uh, besides you, Scott. Uh, oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, so You're I, making one, my month here. <laughs> One of the things that I love is um, is collaboration. You know, mm -hmm. I really am like, I was thinking about that because I was thinking about what we were going to talk about. It's like, man, I love sharing ideas with people, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's probably like, it, it goes back and forth between like teaching and, and collaboration. And I think teaching is a kind of a collaborative effort as well too, but in a very different sense. But I love sharing ideas. I love mixing it up with people. You know, it's just uh, the camaraderie that you build, the community that you build. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe that's one of the reasons why I'm so attracted to comics because, as you know, you can have a team of people making a comic book, right? Yes. And, uh, I don't know. It's just something about sharing the the, the load and, and the spoils and the you know the tragedies and the fun. You know, it's yeah. I, just, I, I love it. I, I love collaboration. I think that's one of my favorite things. And sometimes when you collaborate, it's just like beautiful soccer, man. I mean, it yeah. just works. Some people use like, oh my god, and then yeah. sometimes you'll write something. And someone will come back with an illustration of it. And it's like, yes. oh my God, that is so cool. I never it's thought of that. so many times, man. Yeah. Like, I was, you know, like me and my friend Jasmine uh, Joyner, uh, one time they, uh, I, I, was tell, I was telling them about um, a, a story I, I wanted to, to do. Um, and I, I just kind of soft pitched it to them, right? Mm. They come back over with a full blown story. Wow. I was like, what <laughs> yeah. that's like awesome magic man so anyway so i, I got collaboration yeah. i really meant to and you know uh, when i'm when i'm in the moment and i'm trying to make a point about collaboration i'll use the phrase good jazz right this is what right. good jazz is is that's right everybody being able to influence each other on a finer and finer time scale until something happens you could have never done by yourself Right? right. And you don't know who started, you don't know who stopped. It's just yeah. fantastic. And you, you can know, only get that in collaboration. Up. That's right. That's right. Yep. I, I totally agree with that. You don't know where one 
idea ends and the other one begins. And, you know, I, I think because we live in such a corporate capitalist, you yep. know, trademark copyrighted society that we forget that it's really about the sharing of ideas that matters. Yeah. And, you know, everybody wants to own everything. Intellectual property is like such a horrible <laughs> Okay, that, that's, that's a whole nother podcast, my man. Yeah, no, just, yeah anyway, yeah. Just something. But you're absolutely right. That it, we'll just call it sociopathic individualism and leave it at that for now. I mean, it's pretty intense. So, John, how'd you find this love of collaboration? You know, um, it was probably in comics. Well, you know, you know, quite as it kept, I, I used to be, um, I'm a really, I'm really into music too. And I actually used to do a little singing. Uh, when oh, I was very in, cool. When I was in high school, I used to collaborate with some some guys and would write songs and stuff mm. like that. Like that was that was really cool. Um, and I want to say that maybe some of that started it. And uh, you know, I've always worked in publishing in one way or another. Like I started like super indie publishing. I actually used to work. Uh, I used to co-publish a, a free newspaper when I was in grad school called Black Thought. You know. Oh, there you go. It was an Afrocentric newspaper. It was kind of like, like a you know one of giveaway newspapers, and the ads would pay for it, that kind of thing. Oh, there and you go. Three yeah, yeah. Me, me, and two other friends who were married, and uh, we would do this on a monthly basis. Wow. <laughs> While I was in grad school. So and and it was so much work. <laughs> it was ridiculous. But, but you were we, young, man. It was all love, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was all love. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of work. But it was cool because at the end of the, the month, you would have this this thing that you worked on together with all these other people. And you know, yes. I want to say, like, I caught the bug in publishing and and and, and uh, collaboration, probably. Yeah, that's very cool. Too, but it's like publishing. Yeah. <laughs> so I get it. So how do you keep it in your daily life now, that love of collaboration? Man, it's... Uh, I think everything's a collaboration now. I mean, I'm married, so that's a collaboration. There you go. Oh, <laughs> yes, so that's it a, is. That's the biggest one, you know. Yep. Saying, like, trying to trying to you know, always balancing things, and, mm -hmm. and I think it's about understanding people's roles. And, and the other thing is actually, you know, remembering that, um, you know, sometimes the job is going to be taking out the trash, and other times it's going to be giving a you know a speech. You know, say it depends. Yep. <laughs> right. So it depends. So you have to you have to get in where you fit in, and I think that's the thing. It's like it keeps you sharp. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I do that all the time, you know, because, yep. you know, I, I, I didn't mention it earlier, but I run an imprint called Megascope, um, mm -hmm. which is extremely collaborative, whereas like working with marketing and with editorial and designers and, you know, artists, you know, so it's, you know, just kind of keeping all the plates spinning. You know, we have a bunch of books <laughs> that, we're that we're developing now. So, you know, that's I think fantastic. that's probably big. And then, you know, work with the students and, you know, I think that's I think the the take home message uh what I heard is um we got a lot of different roles to play in our daily life. Yes. And uh we got to get into the mix and 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 be part of how things get solved at every level from taking out the trash to giving a speech. That's right. You uh, have to be egoless, I think, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to I was like e I have an ego, everybody's an ego, but it's like you have to actually like figure out how to how to how to contain it and truncate it to to fit at the end of the day it's about the work it's about the deliverable it's about the experience that you're trying to create for other people you know yes and i suspect there have been collaborations that have not felt as good as others right and yeah. you look at that why was that not satisfying and usually it's because someone couldn't get in to stay in at every level <laughs> they had to do this or they had to do that and right. um so you play the tune that you're supposed to play, you do the gig, and then you just keep looking for the better band, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, like a like a, the eternal side man, right? <laughs> right. And then like, you find a better band and you stick with it and you make as much as you can with it. And if that doesn't last forever, which it won't, then, you know, you do something else. I mean, that I like that idea of, you know, yeah. getting into staying and it's work top to bottom. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work, but you know, it's um, you know, it is what it is. You you have to. I feel like we're here to make to make a difference, and uh, you know, uh, once you figure out what that thing is, what you're good at, you just kind of like you said, keep playing that tune and yes, you know, it, you, know? you, you take the slings. That, yeah, I like yeah. to say when you're going somewhere, when you when you got a goal, when you got a plan, it's easier to take the slings and arrows, right? Yeah. And um. Yeah. Because they're going to come. <laughs> they're oh, going to sure. come, period. So yeah. 
you just might as well be going somewhere. So not all of them hit you. <laughs> you <can't laughs> all right. Well, John, this has been an absolutely fantastic conversation. Uh, please go ahead and tell people where they can find you on social media and any other things you want to talk about that you are involved in. Okay. Well, a good place to start is uh, johnjenningsstudio.com. So that's John Jennings Studio, all one word, dot com. And you can find all of my socials there. Just, you know, on Twitter, I'm uh, actually still on Twitter. I'm sorry. But it's J.I. Jennings, you know, uh, John Jennings Art for my Instagram. And those are like a couple of places. Uh, I'm on Instagram a lot, but, you know, a really good place to contact me is really just to my website. So Okay. Very cool. Well, John, thank you so much. And um, we'll see you when we see you. All right. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Hey there, What You Love fans. Make sure you tune into Zoom on Wednesday, February 15th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Central Time. ReggieCon is going to be celebrating Black History Month with Professor Jennings, and we're going to discuss his new graphic novel, After the Rain. It's an adaptation of Dr. Nettie Okorafor's amazing short story, On the Road. Now, the celebration is free, and it's open to the public. You can find the Zoom link by going to the Google machine and typing in Regicon. That's R-E-G-G-I-E-C-O-N, all one word. Once you've found the link, please, and I said please, share it widely. Hope to see you there.